Hello, I'm Brian Watrous of VMware Education. In this video, we're going to learn how to create a simple workflow in Orchestrator. This video is one in a series of videos in which we're discussing Orchestrator. In the preceding video, we explored how to install and configure vCenter Orchestrator. But now we're going to learn how to create those workflows we talked about earlier. To create a workflow, you begin by optionally creating a folder in which you'll store your workflow. Once you have that folder, you right-click the folder and choose New Workflow. You then name the workflow. You provide a description of the workflow. And then you get to the meat of the matter, which is where you design the workflow schema. In this demonstration, I'll show you how to create a simple workflow. As you can see, I've already logged into the Orchestrator client. And the first thing I'm going to do is make certain that I'm in design mode. When you're in design mode, you'll notice that there are several tabs. The tab we want to select is the Workflows tab, the one on the left. Now, this first step is optional, but it's generally a good idea to create your own folder to, in which you'll store your workflows. I'll do so by right-clicking and choosing Add Folder. I simply need to name the folder. I'll call my folder Brian. And if I want to, I can create subfolders by simply repeating that process. But once I have my folder structure set up, I will right click a folder and choose New Workflow. The first thing you do is you name your workflow. Now to uh, follow the tradition of programmers, our first workflow is going to say hello to the world. So I'm going to simply call this workflow Hello World. Now, you may not have noticed, but we've uh, been taken into what's known as edit mode. When you create a workflow for the first time, you'll automatically be taken into edit mode. Later on, I'll show you how to get into edit mode at other times. As you can see here in edit mode, there are numerous tabs. Right now, we're on the general tab. You can see the name of the workflow. Notice this is exactly the name of the workflow, as I named it a few moments ago. If ever I need to change the name of the workflow, this is where you change the name. Now, there are a number of fields here on the General tab, but throughout this video series, we're going to try to uh, go straight to the things that are of most, utmost importance. The version section that you see here allows us to version our workflows by simply clicking on one of the digits in the version number and then typing a comment to be associated with this particular version. This is my first version of the Hello World workflow, so I'm simply simply going to type initial version. Now there are other things that we can set here, but I'm going to jump to the description field where I'm going to type a description for my workflow. Now in the case of this particular workflow, the description probably isn't absolutely critical, but you should develop the habit of typing these descriptions. We'll find out why later in these videos. Having set up the general tab, I could go to these other tabs, but for this simple workflow, we're going to go to the schema tab. And in the schema tab, you can see that we currently have a schema. Again, remember schema is a fancy word for flowchart. We have a schema that consists of two elements. There's the start element, the green circle with the white, tri white arrow, and the gray circle element is the end element. Now what I'm going to do is add another schema element called a scriptable task by simply dragging and dropping it into the schema. First thing I'll do with that new schema element is to double click its label and I'm going to type something more descriptive. Now what I just typed there is simply a label. The label doesn't control what this schema element does. It's just a nice, simple reminder for me what the schema element's going to do. To change what the schema element actually does, I'm going to click on the schema element's pencil icon, or notice you can type Control E. Either way, we'll go into edit mode. And now we can see the schema editor, which also has numerous tabs. But we're going to begin with the info tab. Notice here is where you can change the name of the schema element. 
So either by double clicking here or typing here, you can change the name of the schema element. And once again, we have a description field. Again, you should always be in the habit of filling these in, so I'm gonna do so once again. This scriptable task says, hello world. Now there are other tabs, but we're gonna jump in this simple example to the scripting tab. Now in this particular workflow that we're creating, we're actually gonna be a little bit fancy. We're gonna call some code that's embedded into this scriptable task. Now there are lots of workflows that don't require any code at all, but to show you how simple this can be, we're gonna type a little bit of code and the language we're typing here is JavaScript. Now what I've typed, system.log, is the name of a method I'm gonna call. And system.log, as you might imagine, is gonna do something with this string, hello world. Now, notice that the first letter in this particular method, the letter S, is capitalized. That's because JavaScript is a case-sensitive language. Case matters. Now, I'm actually going to duplicate this line here. We'll talk a little later on in this video series why I'm doing this, but notice I'm doing not just a system.log, but I'm also going to do a server.log. And as I type this code, uh, if I make mistakes, for instance, if I've omitted this double quote, notice that the schema editor automatically color codes things to indicate clearly when there's a problem. Uh, it also uses colors to indicate things such as these green portions of the code are strings. So I've now typed in two lines, uh, both of which are going to somehow do something with that hello world string that I've input. But to see exactly what they do, let's click the close button, and we're almost done, but before we click on save and close, I'm going to go to this validate button. You should always validate your workflows to see if there are any problems with those workflows. As you can see in the case of this particular workflow, we have no problems. So we'll click close, then we'll click save and close. Uh, you'll recall we um, already set up our version number. If we wanted to, we could increase that version number here, but I'm going to simply continue anyways. And so that I don't get pestered by these messages, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to um, stop prompting us with this prompt. And we have now left edit mode and can see our workflow. Uh, I know that I'm not in work when I know I'm not in edit mode when I see things like the little eyeball icon, or if I see the pencil icon up here, I know I'm not in edit mode. But it's easy to go back into edit mode. You simply click on the pencil icon, or you right click the workflow you want to edit and choose edit from the pop-up menu. Or notice the pop-up menu also informs you that you can type control E. But we didn't come in here to edit this workflow. We've already edited it. What we want to do is run it. So I'm going to right click the workflow, choose start workflow, and when the workflow runs, if you uh, watch real closely there, you may have noticed that these schema elements were color coded to indicate where we were in the workflow as it executed, but right now the workflow is done. To see the results of this workflow, uh, you may need to grab this resize handle um, I've already resized it, but grab the resize handle so that you can see on the general tab the name of the workflow, when it ran, when it completed, whether it completed successfully or not. Uh, later on in this video series, we'll talk about the variables tab, but we're here right now to take a look at the logs tab. And notice that the logs tab has announced, as we suspected it would, hello world. Now that same message actually shows up in the events tab. Once again, here's hello world. And to explain the difference between those, recall that our schema element, let's go back to the schema, our schema element had some code associated with it. The first line where we did a system.log is resulting in the messages that are showing up in the logs tab. On the other hand, the server.log method that we called is resulting in messages showing up on the events tab. So that's uh, part of the reason why we were using these different 
methods. Uh, by using the different methods, we can get the messages to show up in different places in the orchestrator client. But perhaps even more importantly, the messages that you send using server.log are persisted. In other words, they're stored in the file system of the orchestrator server. So oh, there you have it. We have a simple workflow. We ran the workflow once, so here's a workflow execution token. And when we look at the execution token, we can see the output of that particular workflow. Again, I'll remind you this was a very simple workflow in this demonstration. Uh, we have fancier workflows coming up, so please do continue watching this video series. Next up, we're going to take a look at how to add input parameters to your workflows. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check out the other videos in the series to learn more about vCenter Orchestrator. For in-depth, hands-on Orchestrator training, enroll in the VMware vCenter Orchestrator Develop Workflows class and connect with other Orchestrator developers online at communities.vmware.com. Thank you. Thank you.